Hello again, brethren. This is the second video that I'll be doing today. Um, like I've said uh, in the previous video, um, I may be doing a third video. <coughs> Excuse me. I may be doing a third video today. I'll do that later on today. You know, right now it is 11.36 a.m. But uh, I had to take a break after my last video. Um, do dishes, that kind of stuff, and make preparations for dinner tonight. But um, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? We know that. For those of you who believe in the scriptural Godhead. Okay? God has a spirit, a soul, and a body. And these three are one. Like it says here, in, uh, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your King James scriptures very quick, quickly to 1 John 5, verse 7 again. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One. Okay? <clears throat> the Father is the soul. The Word, made flesh, is the body, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And the Holy Ghost, Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. And these three are one. This says nothing about persons. Divine persons, essence, substance, nature, one. Okay? You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? <clears throat> now we're going to look at a few verses here. Some of them are going to be singular verse references. Feel free to read the context on your own time. But we are going to look at this. God has a spirit. Now, in the King James Scriptures, there's a difference between the capital S and the lowercase s. The Lord is that spirit. Okay, so when you see a capital S, it is the Lord himself. It is the Lord himself. Lowercase s is the Lord imparting that spirit. Okay? That's the difference. The, the, the uppercase S is the Lord himself. The lowercase is what the Lord is imparting. Okay? So, go to Genesis chapter 3. God has a spirit. Now, the scripture says God is a spirit, okay? Yes, it does. But, when it comes to the Godhead, which is one God, spirit, soul, and body, that is what we're looking at, okay? Genesis chapter 3, okay? Or Genesis chapter 6, beg your pardon. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. And this is the coming on of the flood. Genesis chapter 3, verse, uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Beg your pardon. And the Lord said, My spirit, that's a lowercase s, shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now, my spirit, Lord case S, what he imparts, okay? Because the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, our Lord and God, our Father, Jesus Christ, okay, one God, okay? And the Godhead, the parts of the Godhead, the spirit, soul, and body, can separate themselves, 
okay? They are not persons. They do not each individually have their spirit, soul, and body, okay? No. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? But my spirit shall not always strive with man. After this, you see man's lifespan slowly getting smaller. Okay, what? Uh, Noah? <coughs> uh, uh, what was it? Um, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Noah lived 950 years after the flood because everything I personally believe, everything changed after the flood. You know, the atmosphere, the oxygen, everything changed. That's why uh, Noah was able to get drunk when he uh, drank of the wine of the vineyard because they fermented a lot quicker because the atmosphere had changed. That's what I personally believe, okay? But you see man's days gradually getting shorter after this, okay? But it says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. God has a spirit, okay? Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1 and verse 2. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of me my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth. What comes out of the mouth? Word. Word was made flesh. Got the Father. Okay. <clears throat> to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Now, for our instruction in righteousness, remember that for our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh can be seen as a type of Satan, and Egypt, the lost life that the Lord has brought us out of, especially in the Exodus. Okay? <clears throat> okay? But, we see but not of my spirit. Again, lowercase s. Because the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, is omnipresent. Okay? Okay? Now, Isaiah 42, verse 1. Now, I covered this several times in several videos about the Godhead, our one God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. But again, okay, and this one, this one right here, behold my servant, uh, Isaiah 42, verse 1, behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul, God has a soul, delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. See, right there. Lowercase s, I have put my spirit upon him. Okay? He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Okay? So you see right there in that verse alone, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. Okay? His servant, a physical, bodily servant, okay, 
God manifest in the flesh, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, the Word made flesh, okay? Because the Godhead can separate, okay? <clears throat> in whom my soul delighteth, God has a soul, okay? The soul of Jesus Christ, the soul of Godhead bodily, okay? I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. God has a spirit. God is a spirit. Yes, God is a spirit. Yes. But in regards to the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Separiah. And th this is not all of them by any stretch of the imagination, brethren. Just a few. Just a few. Zechariah, chapter 4. <clears throat> Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. God has a spirit. God is a spirit. Yes, yes again. But like I said, we're talking about the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? But by my spirit. Zechariah chapter 6, verse 8. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these go toward the north. These that go toward the north country have quenched my spirit in the north country. Have quenched my spirit in the north country. My spirit. My spirit. Okay. The Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Okay. God has a soul. Go to Leviticus. <clears throat> Leviticus number 20, uh, chapter 26, verse 11. You're probably already there. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And let's read verse 12. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And also in verse 30, Uh, Leviticus 26, verse 30. And I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, like the Trinity. And my soul shall abhor you. <clears throat> my soul. God has a soul. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. <clears throat> Let's read... Verses 1 on to verse 15. Or, excuse me, let's read verses 10 on to verse 15 in Isaiah chapter 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. 
To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, Catholics? Saith the Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand, to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Isaiah do we have to go back to Isaiah 42 again? Do we? I think we've covered that quite a bit, haven't we? I think uh, for those of you of the Church of the Living God, you already know this. Go now to Jeremiah chapter 5. <clears throat> Jeremiah. My favorite book in the entirety of Scripture. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse Nine. <clears throat> Actually, let's read verses 7 on to verse 9. Jeremiah 5, verses 7 on to verse 9. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that are no gods. Little g. Kind of like the God, three gods of Catholicism. <clears throat> When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. <laughs> and they were as fed horses in the morning, every one neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall, not, shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? My soul. Yeah, God has a soul. He has a spirit. And he has a soul. <coughs> and let's read while we're in Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 29 on to verse 31. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do? In the end thereof. <clears throat> Want to believe there are three gods that make one God? After such evidences, can't help you. <laughs> can't help you. Okay? Now, Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 8. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. Okay? Jeremiah 9, verse 9. <clears throat> Again. Shall I not visit them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? My soul. Soul of the Godhead. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? Like I told you at the beginning of this video, this is going to be a bunch of one-verse references, very simple, showing that God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? <clears throat> Jeremiah 12, verse 7. I have forsaken mine house, I have left mine heritage, I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. My soul. Now see, if you take the Trinitarian view, three persons, and a person is a spirit, soul, and body, okay, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. If you take the satanic, pagan, Catholic Trinity view or standpoint, each of them are three persons, and a person is a spirit, soul, and body. Note the singular reference, my soul. My soul. God has a body. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. And this is again a reference onto Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my well-beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he shall shew judgment unto the Gentiles. Okay? Matthew 26 Verse 38. This is Jesus, God, our Father, talking here, by the way. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here. And watch with me. Jesus is God the Father. Did Jesus have two souls? No. He is God. God manifest in the flesh. One God. Okay? He did not have two souls. One of the Father. One of himself. No. One soul. God the Father. Soul. The Godhead. My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. Catholics will say, well, that will be his dual nature. It says, my soul. He's referring to the Father, the soul of the Godhead. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Now, we read that in Matthew about a body because the soul was in Jesus Christ. The body of the Godhead. Get it? My soul. And we have looked already at how God has a soul and there's Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Get it? You get it? Okay. Genesis chapter 14, 
verses 18 on to verse 20. God has a body. Who is Melchizedek? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? God the Father. And Melch uh, Genesis 14, verses 18 on to verse 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, Salem means peace, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into, thine, into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Okay? After the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ is Melchizedek. God, the Father, right there. Melchizedek. Okay? What is it? A pre-incarnation of God manifest in the flesh, born of Mary. Okay? Genesis chapter 18, 1 through 5. <laughs> the, three, uh, the three men that came to see Abraham. Trinitarians like to say uh, that's a uh, reference to the Trinity. No, it isn't. Two of them were angels. One was God. Genesis 18, verses 1 under verse 5. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men, three men, stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will come and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts, and uh, comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on, and therefore are for therefore the excuse me, are ye come to your servant? And they said, Do as thou hast said. Okay. Now let's read from verses nine on to verse. 22 in Genesis 18 and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said I will uh, Trinitarians like to make the differentiation uh, to make a point about it says and they said meaning the Trinity no and I will okay and they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? Not the three-person trinity heresy, no. And he said, Behold in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence, and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing with which I do? Talking to himself. 
kind of like what Jesus did. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One God does not make three divine persons. That is heresy. The soul of the Godhead is the Father. Okay, let's continue. Verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now, the two men were not the two parts of the Trinity. That is heresy. No. Those were angels. Abraham stood yet before the Lord, who was present there in a body. It has a body. Okay? <clears throat> and now, go to Genesis chapter 22, verses 1, on to verse 8. Okay? Now, I covered this in the last video, but there again. Okay? Genesis chapter 22, verses 1, on to verse 8. Go there. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both, so they went both of them together. God will provide himself. Himself. And Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 on to verse 32. <clears throat> and Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? Kind of a rhetorical question. And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God, and with men, and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, 
What is thy, and I, I, excuse me. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him, and he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. And he and as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not the sinew that which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Look at verse thirty, for I have seen God face to face. And look at verse twenty four. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. I believe the term that the um, scholars like to use is an anthropomorphic. Someone correct me in the comments, please. Uh, you know, an an anthropomorphic or pomorphic, whatever. I don't know, I don't know, and I don't really care to know. But, we see that God, in the Old Testament, had a body. He wrestled with Jacob. He appeared on Abraham. Yeah, on God. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. Okay. And finally, Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Verses 4 under verse 8. Psalm 40, verses 4 on a verse 8. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies, such as the Trinity. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Now that right there is talking about Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. God has a spirit, a soul, and a body. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, one God. Okay. One second. Sorry about that, brethren. I had something in the kitchen. John chapter 4. The woman at the well. <clears throat> we will begin on at verse 19 on to verse 26. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship 
the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, lowercase s, and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Modern Bible perversions take out the A to blur the line. Which one is it? Which one is it? Okay? Trinitarians say, well, you're saying that God the Father is the soul of the Godhead. Jesus is God the Father, spirit, soul, and body. And the Lord is that spirit. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. God the Father. God has a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? We cannot see the soul. Okay? Nor can I see your soul, nor can you see my soul. Okay? Like both uh, the late Peter Ruckman and Brian Denlinger have said, you have not seen me. One day in your life. Okay? You have not. You and I are made in the image of God. Spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. One God. Our Father. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I purposely, at the first, did not come out with many videos about the Godhead because there were several brethren who were already taking that, that charge, you could say. For example, Jacob Thompson. Uh, that fine young man, he's writing an over 500 page book on the Godhead. That's my type of reading. Can't wait to get that. Also, you have the beloved Aaron Judge. Aaron Murphy Darren Judge. Sorry, brother. Um, whose qualifications for full-time ministry are far off the page. More than qualified. Um, he has done wonderful uh, work defending who God is, the Godhead. The beloved Philip Newton has done amazing um, uh, sermons and videos and studies on the Godhead. Okay? Uh, a very analytical view to Scripture, which is a precious jewel. And of course, Brother Brian of course, who did not come up with this. Okay? Many men had already taken the charge. So, with that, I was like, okay, I did the one video some time back, Who is, uh, who is God? But lately, um, this was something that the Lord had put upon me to do this. And um, these videos, I'm going to put these videos in a playlist on my channel. And um, you, you come here. Uh, you check out my About section. Okay, I, I plainly say in my About section, I am not a Trinitarian. And um, I not only reject the Trinity... But the Trinity is satanic. It is Catholic.
And if the Lord is guiding you, Church of the Living God, who is confused on this, or just can't get your head wrapped around the, how do three persons make one? <laughs> how's, how's that work? Well, that one video that Brother Brian did about that one Jesuit who said the Trinity is meant to confuse you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? He wasn't lying in that, was he? No. This book, the authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures, in no wise teaches one God comprised of three divine persons. That is blasphemy. And that is heresy. And, um, you know, brethren, Church of the Living God, sisters, um, <laughs> look what happened. Look what happened to uh, Brother Brian when um, he took a stand for who God is. Look how he was attacked. Look at Jacob Thompson. What happened to him after he was, uh, he took a stand. Okay? Look at, look at the beloved Philip Newton. How he has been attacked. And of course, the sweet, beloved Aaron Murphy Deering Judge. I got that messed up, brother. Did beg your pardon. Very big part. Okay, but look at what happened, and it is happening to him because he is standing for who God is. Jesus Christ, our God and Father. Um. This is not open for debate with me. Now, the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, who believe and know the scriptural Godhead, okay? Um, you know, hey, Brad, what about this? Hey, Brad, oh, look at this one, too. Great. But you Trinitarians, if you're seeking to know the truth. That's one thing. But if you are going to persist in something that is rank, vile, grotesque heresy, the land is not big enough for the both of us. If you go to the left hand, I will go to the right. Okay? This ain't no game. This ain't no game. And again, here I stand. And there ain't no way through your Catholic rhetoric. There's no way that you, Trinitarian, whomever you may be, there ain't no way you're going to persuade me otherwise. Do you get it? Well, that's it for this short video. Like I said, very this one was kind of a simple one. Um, like I said, I might be, I may be doing a third video today, which will be actually a rather quick video, um, but. That depends on whether or not I can get a hold of this brother a little later uh, through Skype. So he and I can have a little fellowship and we can go through the scriptures ourselves, uh, mano y mano, <laughs> uh, and um, go over his question personally. If I cannot get a hold of this brother, then later tonight I will make a video in response to his question and put it here on YouTube. Okay? Um, the Lord now, through um, several others, has uh, put a gem 
in my lap. Um, a wonderful thing, which I am going to immediately be working on. So um, uh, that video should be coming out in the next couple of days, Lord willing. Got to really go over it and um, put it together, get corresponding scriptures. Um, I had some help with this one, of course. Uh, the video, uh, this upcoming uh, video that I'm referring to. Um, but that is what is next. Uh, Lord willing, we'll see what he has in plan. Or in store, I should say. So, anyway, that's it. I love you. Um, I hope you, uh, I, I hope the Lord is glorified. That's all I care about. That our Lord and Father Jesus Christ be glorified. That's it. Okay? So, I love you. I'm praying for you, my brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.